This is Ryan Womack, Data Librarian at Rutgers University Libraries, and this is part nine of the Data Visualization and R screencast workshop. In this section, we are going to look at 3D and different ways to look at your data in three dimensions uh, in R primarily. So we're on page 50 of the slides, and we're in section five of the code and in this section we're going to just going to start with some extensions of standard functions uh, such as the lattice package has a command called cloud which will take your data and plot it in a three-dimensional perspective so here we're looking at so this is the first line of code in section 5.1 we're looking at the diamonds data once again, and we've plotted price versus caret times table. So our flat horizontal dimension is now caret times table, and the table is a, a measure of the proportions of the, the flat part of the top of the diamond to the total width of the diamond. Um, so it, it usually s lies within a standard sort of range. We can kind of see that in this in this graph, and because it's a lattice function, just like any other lattice function, we can break it down into categories simply by using the pipe and another factor called, uh, in this case, clarity. So here are eight different views for the eight different clarity levels, and similar to our two-dimensional view, we can see some changes in the slope there, and we might want to angle this around. Now this is a static view, but we can change the angle by supplying a, uh, the angle as parameters and sort of twist that cube around. So if you tr if you try different, uh, these are in degrees, so from negative uh, 180 to 180 degrees are really the, the uh, range that you want to think of. You can plug in different numbers for x, y, and z axes to see how that cube will move around. Um, we can also do it on data like our cars data and that's much sparser so here the points sort of don't really fill the cube and it's a little hard to see the pattern um, when we're looking at, at it this way. Uh, we can even apply the cloud function to data like the Titanic survivor proportions and uh, this if you think of this as a 3D uh, bar chart it's something like that we've got the, the proportions plotted within the cube and not a big fan of that graph um, as revealing anything interesting but it is possible to do that as well uh, with the cloud function so we're going to build up from these simple basic uh, versions to more complicated uh, and more complete 3D representations. But before we do that, just a reminder that we can represent 3D data in two dimensions. And one way to do that is the level plot. The example in code 5.2 uh, generates some data and then plots it. And the level plot uh, divides the two-dimensional space up into rectangular regions and then plots a value for each of those rectangles. So you can see this is uh, approximating a curve, but it's kind of a chunky looking pattern. Uh, that is the level plot function, and we can generate smooth contours using the contour plot function. So once again, the next step we um, actually are pulling some pre-existing sample data that's in another R package and plotting it along contours like this. So the contour shows us the boundary between different levels of the variable. So this is ozone levels versus radiation um, and temperature. And we can see for different values of radiation and temperature we have different levels of I'm sorry, it's temperature and 
and ozone, excuse me, no, it's temperature and radiation, and then the, the, the contour represents the ozone level. Uh, what this is actually about is not that significant in this context, but just once again that we can use the the contours to represent a third dimension that we think of as rising or sinking off of the page. This once again is a lattice function so it takes the the pipe operator to break uh, the the data into categories so we can see how different groups have different relationships. Uh, there, is, there are ggplot versions of these functions, geomtile and geomcontour, and you might want to explore those as well if you're using this in ggplot. But ggplot does not at this time perform true three-dimensional visualization. Um, I never want to rule anything out with, with ggplot uh, expanding to that functionality in the future, but doesn't really do that to my knowledge right now. Okay, but so this is this is not it, it, we're, the data is three dimensional, but the visualization is not in this case. Let's look at something that is truly three dimensional, and this is a three dimensional wireframe. Whoops, uh, I skipped past my first example. Is a built-in example with some data that's in in R. This is section five point three. If you run that code for wireframe, you will see this is actually the elevation of the Mauna Loa volcano in Hawaii. And our three-dimensional perspective is uh, actually revealing the surface of the volcano and the light source operator uh, allows us to shine light on it from a particular angle so we generate shadows and helps us understand what that shape looks like. We can use the wireframe function as well for more abstract surfaces, and that's the second example in 5.3. Uh, so we can plot some, you know, mathematical surfaces using wireframe. So this gives us a nice three-dimensional perspective. There's a lot of potential here, uh, but we're going to go even further. We want to really explore our data. That's what this is all about. So we're going to look at our next package. That's RGL. And RGL in section 5.4 actually will bring up a surface, but if you click and drag on this surface, you can actually manipulate it. So this is the same data, the Mauna Loa volcano elevation data, uh, but now because it's truly interactive, we can understand a lot more about the full way that that surface works. So the RGL package does this for us. We can plot data points as well. So the example of plot 3D that you can run uh, pulls this up. And these are again rescalable. If you resize it, it'll, it'll enlarge on your screen. And so these are, this is a cloud of points we can drag this around and this is a case where looking at it in three dimensions really does bring out some additional structure. If we look at it from this side, well it looks like a random scatter. If we look at it from this side, uh, we've got a low group on the left and a high group on the right. But as we twist it around, we notice um, it's actually from this side, it's more like an arch. And to me, I this this relationship of the data suggests something like a twisted towel. If we had a towel, we twisted it up and sort of curved it around, uh, we have something like that. We've got these sort of two lobes of data and they connect via this arch. And that is really only apparent if you stop to look at it from all dimensions. There's certainly some angles that it looks like a randomly scattered cloud uh, but we can understand the data much better by plotting it in three dimensions like this. Uh, let me take a look at our slides to see how we're doing. Uh, pretty much covered those. And now our last element on this slide is the mosaic 3D. Um, I am going to show you a little bit more, uh, one more example of the plot 3D. So the, let's 
run our plot 3D again, but look at our diamonds data so we see it with a familiar example. So I'm plotting price versus carrot and color. That's the same sort of syntax that I used for the static three-dimensional view. If I look at this from the side, uh, that is our same price carrot relationship that we've been looking at in two dimensions earlier. But now I can spin the cube around and I can see these are the different uh, clarity ratings. It's clarity, right? Sorry, color that I plotted it by. So seven different color ratings for the diamonds. And I can see how the data sort of separates. And I can maybe one thing I can do is get a better sense of what the outliers are for each of those colors. Um, I'm not sure that this view really produces any surprises or any uh, unusual relationships, but uh, just the fact that you can take any of your data and drop it into this cube and start to examine it from many other viewpoints may reveal some new patterns in your data. So that's the RGL package and Plot3D that will do that for you. Uh, then our next example here is Mosaic 3D. So we talked about the Mosaic function a couple of uh, sections back when we looked at categorical data. And this is uh, just to show you that that categorical data view can be extended into three dimensions as well. So this is a three-dimensional view of the mosaic plot uh, of the Titanic survivors data that we earlier talked about. I think it's a little uh, a little bit confusing. It's a little hard to decipher, uh, but some of you who have greater spatial capacities than, than me, perhaps, may may find this intriguing. Uh, once again, like any other R function, you can experiment with uh, a slightly different view of the data, and it's still going to, uh, to do that. So I simplified the cube a little bit by, by only focusing on age, and we've got a little bit less represented here. Uh, so if you like that, you, you're, you're welcome to experiment with it. Uh, Mosaic 3D. Now, there's actually quite a lot you can do with three-dimensional objects in the R workspace. So uh, another example follows in this PERSP 3D section. So we can generate a three-dimensional perspective of any sort of object. And in this case, I've, I've kind of generated an abstract sphere. Uh, that's what this code is doing for the R, the X, Y, and Z. And I have actually slapped on top of the sphere an image that corresponds to the countries of the of the globe and with this I can actually rotate my sphere and look around um, so these are really sort of abstract objects that if you if you know your way around a bit you can do lots of different things that's just a, a sort of a, a an example of what can be done, and we can actually also set this in motion and have a rotating Earth. A little bit hard to see there. What I should do is I should plot it first, size it up just a bit so that it looks a little more impressive like this. And now I'll run the play command and we'll see it in motion. We should see it in motion. Uh, it's a little bit hard to, to time this correctly. So, let's see what it's doing. There we go. So, you can, you can perhaps think of some other uses for this type of, of approach, but the point really is that R is capable of handling many kinds of three-dimensional objects and 
can do so in a somewhat abstract way. So you can extend this um, to m lots of different types of plots. A, a, another example of using the perspective 3D command is here we're just generating a random sequence of variables and what the perspective 3D will do in this case, instead of plotting individual points, it will actually connect those up as a surface. And so there are certain variables that you may want to consider as a surface uh, that may reveal some behavior and some that you may want to plot as points. So the plot 3D uh, function plots them as individual points, but the persp 3D function will generate a surface that you can view from lots of different perspectives and sort of understand how that works. So these are all tools at your at your disposal. So let me stop